All right, everyone. Welcome back to 11th episode of the Puddle of Grunge podcast, depending on when this goes up. Um, Actually, this could be the 12th. Could be the 12th. Could be the 12th. Or 11th or 12th. Welcome back, anyways. So today, we're revisiting our, what was it, like, third video, I think, on some of our favorite guitarists. But now, we got a little surprise for you guys. So, yeah. All right, so today, what we're going to be doing for you guys is while we're talking about some of our favorite guitarists and some of our favorite riffs and solos and stuff, we're going to be playing and kind of showcasing why they're our favorites, stuff like that. Colby, what do you want to add? Uh, I'm, really excited to, I'm really excited to do this. I've been pushing this episode for a while now yep. because we have finally gotten the equipment necessary to do it. Yep. And uh, actually, just in front of us now, I don't know if you could see them. Ryan has his pedal board in front yeah, of him that he's constructed, our... and I've got mine just right in front of me. Yeah, it's so on the future. If you guys want like a what's on your pedal board type video, we could do that as well. Um, for gear, I could list the stuff that we're using down in the description. Um, it's not anything fancy, so don't. Yeah, but uh, anyways, Colby, you just want to get right into this? Let's do it. What are we going into first? Well, I think we are going to start. We had just made a list of this before we started uh, this episode. So, uh, might as well start with STP. All right. We're already in standard, so. So, uh, actually, most of these riffs, Ryan is actually the one that plays the guitar. And most of these, some of these I've gotten, or some of these I play, but 85% uh, of them are Ryan. So. You're going to be the one to go to here. And the first one we got on the list is Lady Picture Show. Yeah, so I love Lady Picture Show. I love the airiness of it because that, that first oh, let me turn the tune around. That first riff is so open. It's just... That's such a beautiful chord. That is such a beautiful chord. Yeah, you know? and just to think... Um, Oh, you you can't. There's not really too many Dean songs where you can say this, but we'll we'll talk about it later. But Interstate. He loves yeah. He he loves using that just just the open chords like that. But like he starts Lady Picture Show on the chord that ends Interstate Love mm -hmm. Song. Just uh, I think it's an E. It's like an open E major open chord e, yeah. with a lot of open strings ringing. Yeah, it's just, it's so beautiful. I just love the way that it rings out, especially it complements Scott's voice so well. Because it's just doing that the entire verse. I'll just keep it clean for now, but it's just. And then into that, that chorus. It's so cool because he's doing like stabs and stuff with the. He's doing high stabs. And then the bass is moving around a lot on this. And then in between that part, I love because he has, for this song, he has a little rotary effect on there. And in that chorus part, it's like. Just, it's just such. Like a, it's, it's like a passing chord. Yeah, it's it's just such a cool little thing that he a he adds a lot of that in. Um, I know he doesn't still remains. I can't remember the part for it though. But he's like up on the. And still remains. Yeah, in the in the chorus part towards the end of the chorus. But, um, yeah, Lady Picture Show is just great. I love every aspect of it. And then, I mean, for the bass, we don't have a bass mic'd up right now or anything, but um, you could talk a little bit about the bass, just what's special about that, because I know he's moving around so much with uh, Dean. Yeah, especially with the main chords that are played during the verse. Uh, Rob's mostly just following, um, uh, what's it, root? Yeah. Root notes, or like whatever, like the root of whatever chord he's playing, or Dean is playing. Uh, but then when he when uh, Dean is going into the stabs, um, he does a lot of arpeggiated stuff. Yeah, he just he arpeggiates off the A string and it starts I think off the 
Yeah, he starts on the night spread. Okay. Yeah, so it's. I mean, like when we play, it's really cool just to like see that dynamic between the bass and the guitar because that's that's literally what STP is all about. Just that dynamic between Dean and Rob mm-hmm. as musicians and just locking in totally. So it's yeah. it's a it's a beautiful thing to watch. If you guys get the chance to see STP, please do. Lady Picture Show is just such a playful, light, airy song. Yeah. And it's uh yeah, it's definitely it's really fun with, to play. Uh, with a dark meaning behind it, kinda. Oh yeah. Very dark yeah. meaning behind it. That's I mean, Scott was a genius at that in in itself. I mean, just writing lyrics that sound so uplifting and happy, but when you get to the bottom of it, it's really there's some deep stuff in there that he's writing about. I remember you told me what it was about and I was I was completely surprised. Yeah. Um Yeah, I I would go through the solo. I could play a little bit of it. Um but he does he does like this cool lick in the middle of it the and just leads back into the in the verse. It's so it's just a great is that probably Probably minor pentatonic. Yeah, probably. Or uh, some type of exotic scale that he's using, just because I know he likes to mess around in that I love lot, his. I love his walk up the... Ba-da-da-da. Yeah, or the... Top. Just the... <laughs> just his, hey, ben, his bends all over that are just tasteful. Yeah, I... Yeah. It's a great song. I always I I'm always like watching unless I'm like really focusing on my playing, I'm definitely watching uh you. Yeah, like it's, when we're playing like It's so show. fun. It's so fun to play. If you if you want to learn it, go learn it. It's it's a great song. But what do we got next, Colby? So much great. So actually the next one that we have is uh you want some ASMR for the podcast? Or? That that is good stuff. Let me tell you. Whoo. All right, Colby. <laughs> okay, everyone, we are back. I did a little ASMR for the for the pod. Oh, open good. open my open my can on there. Nice little nice little outtake there. But um, did you tap the tap the? I didn't, but I took a big slurp out of the. Okay, so the next song. Ooh, that's a ginger ale hitting me too now. Yeah. Um, the next song that we have on here is actually still remains. Okay. Yeah. So. Again, you. Yeah, Still Remains is one of my favorite STP songs, just in general, because just the profoundness of the lyrics from Scott, I'd say. Um, but once again, it's such an airy song. Purple is such an airy album, um, through and through. It's just, I mean, Lady Picture shows um, from Tiny Music, but Purple is such an airy album throughout the entire thing. It just makes you want to go on a drive. So here's the main riff for Still Remains. <laughs> It's just no, it's not. Never mind. It, it, Dean uses that. He, he, there's a chord that goes into the chorus. It's it's that. It's this. It's this chord right here. He uses that so often. I I mean, he uses it back up here. 
in the same part of the song, but I know he uses it in other songs as well. It's such an interesting chord. It has such a interesting playfulness to it, I feel like, and he spices it in so well. Um, but you know the bass part for this, so... Uh, yeah, I can kind of... Uh yeah. Well, I think I might be out of tune. Yes, I am. So while you're doing that, it's really just a, uh, what is this, a Ready. G sharp to a... Ready? Three, three two, two, one. Goes to a G, whoops. Yeah, so you can get an idea of what the bass part's like under that, but it's... I mean, it, throughout the song, he's doing cool stuff underneath. He does a lot of arpeggios. Thing. Yeah, a lot. That's, Rob that's is Rob's so bread and butter right that there. is his bread and butter. Um, but yeah, still remains just that that chorus part in itself is so that slide, it's so slidey. Um, I love when Dean uses sliding riffs like that, um, like in down and stuff. Uh, it just it sounds great when he does it. So um, into that chorus though, it's he uses this chord right here he uses he uses a lot of interesting chords i think purple is when he definitely steps up his uh chord voicing game in a lot of aspects um but this is this is the chorus for still remains back into the verse so yeah it's just a beautiful song and it's so simple there's no solo or anything it's literally just those two sections put together there's a little um bridge section i'd say with the breakdown where, where part. you just are holding that one uh, one it's, ringer now yeah, chord going back into it it's so great such a simple song but so effective um still remains one of my favorite songs on double pilots for sure so colby what do we got next all right have, have this one's for you i know here. this one's for you actually uh this one oh yeah the next one we have on here uh kind of an underrated one that we yeah. both just absolutely it's love amazing from shangri la da um wonderful it's Originally played an acoustic. There's um, elements in there, but of electric, obviously. There's a slide yeah. solo. Yeah, I don't have the slide solo down. Yeah, I don't either. But, um, so I kind of, I'm not really that too good of a slide player, but um, it's very hard. Yeah, the. Let me go into. So it starts on a C. I guess we'll kind of. So the intro of it starts with uh, just kind of like hammering on on a C chord. Oh wait, mm, wrong one. This is the verse. Just such interesting chord voicings. Would you be my navigator? Would you take me to a place we can hide? He goes to an F. As I'm falling out. Don't feel anything at all. That's kind of a little messy, but... A little messy, but... It kind of... It's got, like, this really interesting... Um, oh, Sorry, guys. I was singing a little bit. I love that song. It's just so perfect. It's a very dissonant chord. But yeah. it's kind of like... It's kind of just a passing chord, because then he goes back to the, the C right, right the after C. it. Yeah, it's... Right after it. He, dude, that, that chord progression is really interesting. I love his voicings on there. Yeah. Through and through. So many. Th this kind of. Um, let me see. He's kind of doing like this weird. What is it? Has it been past thirty minutes? No, I'm just making sure your like guitar is in the camera. 
he's doing this weird uh, chord shape there because then he removes the one. So great, dude. Yeah. Uh, and then it kind of just replays, but then it ends uh, uh, on a... Ooh. Still getting warmed up here, guys. It's not still, get, still getting a little warmed up. It's early in the morning, but uh, I'm so used to playing it on an acoustic too. Yeah, it is meant to be played on acoustic. It sounds beautiful on an acoustic, but um, yeah, wonderful. Just through and through a great song lyrically, um, musically. Eric's drums are laid back on that one too, and then he kind of just brings it up a ton um in that chorus part with the. With the symbols and splashes and everything, it just sounds great. So, yeah, totally a beautiful song. If you haven't listened to Wonderful, go check it out off Shangri La Da. It's a great song. So, yeah, anything else you want to add for Wonderful? Um, I don't know if you've learned the bass part or anything, but uh, I, haven't, you know, I haven't, I haven't tried to learn it yet. But um, it's really one one of my favorite songs to like play and sing. Even though the chords are very hard, it's a uh, once you can get them down, it's a it's a really enjoyable song just to play in general. Yeah. Uh, so after that, we move on to Dead and Bloated. For you can take this one. You can take this one. You want me one. to take this take one? Take this one, man. Sure. All right. This one is as fresh in my mind, so I feel like you've you've known this one for a while. Yeah. So. Okay, so I guess I'll play the uh, intro riff just to start. Just off. first off, opening track off their first album ever. For the world's first introduction to STP, and this is what you get. Okay. Here, you want me to do a little smell like the rose? Sure, let's do it. <clears throat> I am smelling oh. like the rose that somebody gave me Cause I'm dead and bloated Still, still getting warmed up. Disgusting riff, dude. Opening disgusting riff for that, dude. Yeah, he starts with those stacked chords. It's I'm, just, I'm always talking about stacked chords. Just a. That's clean for, clean for you if you want the. So, so creative. And I mean, to think that he transcribed that off Scott just saying. Da, 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 da. Just that. Oh, man. It's weird how, like, a, kind of like a vocal melody is turned into a guitar part. Yeah, I know. It's, it's really like, weird how it works. Like, I would say almost objectively weird. Yeah. The way you have to play it. Cause it That's just Dean, though, man. Just, just subjectively the way that he plays is weird. Just the way that he goes about crafting his, his parts are weird, you know? But I love it. It's so, they're so fun to play. All his parts are so fun to play. Yeah, I think it was, I almost think it was Rob. Yeah. Like, uh, Scott was singing it to Rob, and then he kind of worked it Probably. out. Probably. The goat. Absolute G, dude. Rob. Rob DeLeo, man. Yeah. Uh, then I'll kind of, maybe I'll play the pre-chorus riff. Yeah, do the pre-chorus. Uh, Scott, it's also used as a stack chord. It's one of my favorite parts to play, because you can kind of uh, uh, embellish up on top yeah. of it. So. This leads back up, leads us back into the back into the main riff. Ugh. Just makes you stank face, dude. Just mm. yeah, one of my one of my all time favorites, for sure. Wow. Oh, it's such a killer opening track. Yeah. First, oh my God, man. Just thinking about it. 
hear, I, dude. I wish I could hear that one for the first time again. Damn. Or just listen to core for the first time again. Yeah, listen to core for the first time again. That'd be great. We should do a core listen through, to be honest. But yeah, dead and bloated, guys. Um, let us know your full thoughts on dead and bloated in the comments section, or let us know if you like this style of video, um, so we can keep doing it because we we like doing it. It's pretty pretty fun to do this. So yeah. Um, What's next? I think next we got Trippin. Mm -hmm. So Trippin is one of the funnest songs to play. Um, just totally. And it, it just brings out the guitar player and everyone, I feel like. Just absolutely fun solo. The riff is so fun to play. There's so much muting, so many like little minute details that he's doing. A lot of percussive it's, elements. Yeah, it's doing. just man. So it starts out on this chord. I play it different. I play it differently. He does it like an actual chord. I play it with just two fingers. Just like that. But it starts out on that. And then it goes into this. So that's the that's the verse riff right there, and that is just it's like a freight train. It's just it, driving, dude. So it, uh, that's so fun to play, through and through. Such a fun song to play, and it's it's only like what three minutes long, maybe yeah. even like maybe even a little under three minutes. It goes by so quick, dude. It's like an old timey single. Yeah, it just goes by so quick, but it mm, blaze of glory. That's what it does, dude. Um, so yeah, that's the, that's the verse part right there. Um, kind of goes into that. It's based off of just this one chord, that one chord, the F sharp, F sharp minor actually. And yeah, just blazing riff. Love the, love the harmonics there. Um, the like open, the open strings right there just makes it a little airy like Dean would, you know, man, I love it. Just making use out of simple things and making it much, uh, making it much more than interesting. It is. Just making it much more interesting, um, because it's just a simple chord, but the most out of the least. Yeah, um, but the chorus—that's where it, it, it. He makes the vocal melody out of just a chord, really, and it's so interesting how he does it. Uh, do you want to take the chorus? Sure, I might have a little. So, yeah, so after he goes into that, uh, then it goes to B minor. And at least the first time. Yeah. It goes right back into it. goes right that. back into it, and then it just goes even fast. I feel like it goes even faster, that second verse. Um, yeah. a lot of the time because I feel like once you once you get out of that first chorus it's so easy to get like back into the the rhythm of it it's so easy to switch the rhythm back into that um, I feel like it keeps that going so well um, but yeah I can I can demonstrate a little bit of the solo he does some interesting stuff in there that I could probably show he does some double stops um, but the solo is just it's a monster if you tackle it I've tackled it, but I haven't like perfected it yet, so we're still working on it. But once you perfect it, I can only imagine that feeling. And, and writing that solo, too. Just... Mm. Great use of different techniques. Give yeah. yourself some gain. Oh, I... Yeah, all right. No, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not using that one. All right. <laughs> Is 
And then it goes on a crazy run. Just a crazy run right there. I don't want to do it. Um, and I didn't even do that one very well. But and then he does like a little. Ends it off so well. Does a little legato lick there. Haven't done that one in a while either, but. <sighs> and that little melody right there. It's so it's so perfect. Such a perfect song. Uh, Trippin is great. If you guys ever want to learn a challenging song on guitar, definitely go for Trippin. It's quick and uh, not a lot of parts to it. Yeah, so. stylistic-wise, it's it's very difficult. Yeah, very, very difficult to play. So, yeah, Trippin is great. And I mean, you can talk about the bass part a little bit if you want. Uh, yeah, it's kind of definitely hard. I'd be really nice if we could play bass, but uh, he's also just following, uh, at least on the main riff, he's doing the... Back at it again. Camera shut off once again. With the white Sorry. vans. With the white vans. Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. Oh, man. That's for Oh, uh, man. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. All right. So, <laughs> so what were we talking about? Trippin'. Uh, if you want to learn a good song on Trippin' on, uh, from STP, learn Trippin' for sure. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to our next one. Let's go so, straight into it. Next one. Plush. Plush. Plush is also a very open song, I feel like. Um, once you really get into the nitty gritty of it it's got am i muted oh, shit. it's got just the slightest bit of chorus on it on that opening riff and it just sounds big it just sounds massive so this is the opening riff for plush Yeah, so just an absolute awesome riff. I know I saw a clip like yesterday of Rob talking about it. Um, can't remember what he said. It's like uh, Bossa Nova. Bossa Nova, yeah. And I think that was Interstate. It's like parlor style is what he said. Is plush. It's like a parlor style riff. He said and he played it and he's ragtime. Like, ragtime. Ragtime. Rag yeah. And he just brought it up to up here and then yeah. Magic happened, dude. Yeah, he kind of started in the middle of the fretboard and he kind of moved down from. Yeah, the man. Yeah, plush is uh, chromatic. Yeah, very. And it's just uh, phenomenal. It's so fun to it's play. Fun to play on both uh, bass and guitar. Yeah, the bass part is. It's really fun to watch uh, someone play that. Uh, I next next time that we do something like this, we'll have bass um, mic'd up as well, so we can play a little bit of the bass part. I feel like that would add to it, but. Yeah, just Plush is an absolutely stellar song to learn and play. It's very easy. It's based off of just... That. Just that. Those chords. Back to the G. Back to the G. And then, uh... What's that? Then the, uh... What is it? Technically, the, the chorus is part. it is it the chorus? Technically, I'd say that. Yeah. And I feel I'll, I'll keep it clean, but then it goes into the. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. Great repetition of chords, I and it works so well too. Just from that, I love this voicing. Uh, man, beautiful, just absolutely beautiful. So, plush. One of the oh, and then he goes into a a really cool um, power chord riff at the um, when the dogs will find her part. So it goes it goes kind of like this. You got it too. 
maybe. wrong doesn't it well I, th I think you might be barring like the first three yeah so that's a cool addition there he does a lot he does some lead stuff over that i don't know what the parts are but yeah he does he does uh, he's arpeggiating that. Sometimes. yeah <laughs> uh so yeah plush is just one of the absolute banger songs to play definitely get people jumping i feel like um yeah what do you want to add about plush um again with the bass player he does a lot of arpeggios yeah um I love the way he uh, embellishes upon like the actual chords. He does like some kind of like minor bends when he's doing just the the normal. Yeah. Yeah, just a little add a little dissonance to it. Yeah, yeah. It's um it's just a fun song to play. Yeah. I know I, s I say that about just a, a lot of STP songs are just really fun to play. Yeah, in general. So go learn them, please. So yeah. What do we got next, Colby? Uh, well, our last one. Last one for STP have. that we're going to go through as one of our favorite riffs. You guys know it wouldn't have been left off the list. Come on now. We got a whole day dedicated to it. What am I saying? Colby. Interstate love song. Interstate love song, baby. So, what a beautiful song, first of all. What a beautiful song. Um, it starts off with a very delicious slide part from Dean. So, Colby, we want to play that? Yeah, I'll count I'll count us in. One, two, three, four. I love those chords. Me and Ryan uh, always, like, when we first started, or well, more around the time that I first started playing, mm -hmm. which is, uh, I think, just a little over three years now, um, we could not figure out these beginning chords. Yeah, we could never just, figure out the order of them. Yeah. The thing that always tripped us up was this little... Uh, um, yeah. That little transfer or tr uh, passing chord. Into, yeah, it's into just... Yeah, yeah. That that part is just so beautiful. Um, STP uses a he, Dean uses a slide so well. Um, I wouldn't say he's necessarily a slide player, obviously, but just the way that he uses, it, I feel like it's kind of not as common in that era. You know what I mean? Um, we throw this yeah. word around a lot, but uh, tasteful. Very tasteful. We Very always tasteful say tasteful, it. stylistic. Those Very are, tasteful those are our words it. here. Um, so yeah, then we got the main, the beef, the meat and potatoes of the song, baby. So Colby, let's get into it. You want to do it? You want to both do it? Let's hope we can play it in tune. Ready? Right. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Do it over again really quick. I freaking I messed it up. One, two, three, four. Wow. Sounds freaking amazing with two guitars layered. Wow, dude. Just a a meat and potatoes riff right there, dude. 
just make uh, that just oh, makes it's just the so song. Iconic, though. It's it's iconic. I love that riff so much. Um, it's so it's so easy too. It's so easy. It can be difficult learn. though. It can be Especially difficult. Especially if you're first starting. If you're first starting, yeah. But I feel like it's one that is kind of an essential riff to learn. Um, really gets some of those good techniques in there especially with the the chord changes the quick chord changes right there um but you keep one finger anchored it's it's such a yeah very very fun song to play and then the verse man you want to go over the verse uh sure uh we are not music theory experts here yeah but, uh, no, but not again at all. it is just not a chromatic all. thing starts on a c sharp with these all being the roots to C, B, B flat, A sus two, yeah, A sus two. But uh, I kind of like playing it clean more than I like uh, dirtying it up. But uh, I'll play the verse really quick, stylistically the way that he would. Okay. Then he would go back and go. So beautiful. And go right back into it. Yeah. So beautiful throughout. I mean, it's it's such an impactful song. Like you said, I mean, it's just iconic. It's literally just iconic. Perfect song through and through. Everything about it's perfect. Yeah, I mean, you could talk about the bass line a little. I know that's probably your favorite one to play. Um, yeah, we probably I mean, it was the it. first that you learned uh, wasn't yeah, it yeah pretty much yeah uh, it's, we played it what probably over a hundred something times yeah yeah easily in total we play it like back to back sometimes um yeah again arpeggios yeah made uh, just off of uh the roots um everything and then the the chorus just goes back into that intro slide section with the chords um as well so it's very very just not repetitive but it just sticks out so well um yeah beautiful beautiful yeah. song interstate's such a great song um go learn it seriously that, go learn that's it. one yeah i try to learn it way too early i don't know if that's really a thing but it kind of helped me it, it builds a lot of the techniques um i feel like but your fingers used to just morphing into weird uh, chords. weird chords especially the what is that it's a some sort of b some sort of something b with a b some sort of B chord. I don't know. But then you got like a... I play this chord differently. Colby plays the... Yeah, you play it like that. I play it with the bar. He bars it on this uh, first yeah. fret. Same thing, but I mean, yeah. People just play it differently. You can play it differently too. But, yeah. STP, man. Shout out Dean DeLeo. One of our favorite guitarists of all time. So glad that we came back and redid this. And that we could do STP. Um because it's so fun to go through these riffs. If you want to see like more parts to this, especially with these bands, uh, we'll do more in the future. But yeah, if you want to see more parts of this as well, we can add on to it, add more riffs that we like and stuff. So yeah, the next artist we're going to go into, Colby, let me know. Alice in Chains. Ah! Yeah! All right, so... Jerry Cantrell, baby. Um, sadly, my my guitar that I have that has like the blue dress stickers on it is out of commission right now. Sadly, or else I would play that. I'd probably just put tape over the bad parts because I don't know how YouTube censors it. But right now we're going to Allison Chains. So for all you Chainiacs out there, hey, we should uh <laughs> we got tuned down a half step. So I just gotta get my. I'm going to play another one, too. Okay, everyone. All right. So, Alice in Chains. So, we're starting so we can go up in tuning, so we don't have to go down again. So, we're starting in drop C sharp, which is something that Jerry loves to do, um, and I appreciate when he does it a lot of the time because it's just... I appreciate it. Man, I appreciate it. I appreciate it so much. Appreciate the hell out of it. But Colby is actually going to start us off with the first track off of Facelift, We Die Young. All right. So now this is where my, my high gain pedal finder is. 
the Freedman B E O D baby. Shout out uh, Dave Friedman because he Shout makes some Friedman. amazing products. Yes, and, uh, there's a main proponent of his sound now, Jerry's mm-hmm. sound. God, dude. Now he's back into the chorus, which is the same as the intro. So, so chunky. Just, oh, man. I, Yeah. Yeah, man. One of my absolute favorite riffs. Every time I hear it, I'm like, oh, my God, I forgot about how good this is. Even just you playing it right there, I'm like, oh, that's such a great riff. Yeah, it's uh, it's really interesting. I'm a, I'm a, like, a, of course, you know, it's a drop tuning. It's kind of. Yeah. Uh, standard protocol with that that little bend on mm. this uh, six fret I just think it's uh, it's grooving it's, it's a grooving bluesy riff. it's bluesy grooving yeah sludge metal dude it's ah oh, sludge god he dude he's got some great leads in there too though and then he does oh. like the Oh, so <clears throat> does those EVH style kind of so chunky. Lines. One of his inspirations, obviously, oh, yeah. just shows so much in his playing. Um, we Die Young is such a oh, I, man. Love that one. Love it. First song off a of facelift. Just imagine putting that record on back in the day for the first time, and that's the first thing you hear. It's just destruction on the guitar, basically. Yeah, the one thing that we were always so um. Uh, confused about was just the timing of the riff. Yeah, it is very weirdly timed. Because uh, with the, these jumps from like a from the third to the fifth, and then he jumps up to the eleventh. Mm-hmm. Very weird. That's the part that I have a lot of trouble with. Is that timing part right there? That weird timing part going up to the eleventh because it is very weirdly placed, but it just works so well. Um, yeah. Slide up and right back. Scary right is on the wall, bro. That's ugh, I love that. Love that song so much. Um, all these riffs you guys should go learn if you play guitar because if you don't play guitar, start playing. Why not? Yeah, especially if you enjoy rock music. It's a uh, yeah, very rewarding. Very to rewarding to learn. To songs, learn but you know your favorite song. Uh, so it's also nice just to enjoy as well. Yeah, not putting yourself through the through the ringer. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah. Colby, We Die Young, awesome riff. Colby's going to do the second riff for us, actually, which is Them Bones. Also an opening track, just another killer once again. But, yeah, Colby, hit it. Hopefully I've got this down. Once again, just meaty. That's why I'd say just heavy. Um, comes in on that scream from Lane as well. Just what do you got to say about it? Um, it's again, it's another grooving riff. Yeah, uh, he tends to write a lot of a uh, very rhythmic uh, parts, especially if we were gonna talk about a um, damn that river. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. In a in a different tune or in a uh, in a drop tuning, it's just uh, Jerry does a lot of really cool stuff. Yeah, like very very cool slidey stuff a lot of the time um, that I love. It's so fun to play. Uh, but damn that river! Um, you want to do a little bit of the solo too because that solo is sick. Which one? The not damn that river. Uh, them bones. Them bones. The uh, intro part of the solo with the palm muting. Um, 
it's it is pretty hard. So we don't get it necessarily the first time. It's all right, but just he's doing so much interesting stuff in that solo, and just really captivating, really a memorable solo through and through. So yeah. So uh, yeah. Wait, let me get one playthrough of it because yeah. I think I, I I'll be able to do it. Actually. Yeah, yeah. But just uh, let me let me get. One. <laughs> I'm under pressure because of the camera or something, but I'm just do the intro part, like the palm mute part. We don't have to do the whole thing. So the palm mute part for them bones, once again, just absolutely so fun. So Colby, if you wanna. <laughs> yeah, just that that intro part. He comes in. He comes in so fast on that. It's just a. You're really not expecting the solo in that moment mm. um, after that chorus. Uh, it comes in kind of unexpectedly, and it just blazes, man. Yeah, we can go through part by part, by part though. Yeah, we could do that, yeah. So then after that, he goes up, uh, does a bend at the... There's a cool little run there. Yeah. He does a lot of... Uh, like flying up a scale and then sliding down, you know, like a classic uh, pentatonic yeah. move. Just he he loves that E minor pentatonic, loves it. Um, this one part in it, the bend after I think he the other palm mute part in it, the <laughs> just that. <laughs> Love that bend right there. Um, so tasteful, and then going up to the. <laughs> Something like that. Something like that. Um, but yeah, just his creativeness, the bluesiness, everything throughout. Love Jerry. That's why he's like one of my. That's why he is my favorite guitarist. But yeah, them bones holds the test of time for sure. Yeah. So after that, Ryan, uh, I don't know if this is on our list, but uh, you should go into some. Uh, Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So I, I know I've said it a lot, but the, self, the self-titled the self Tripod album is my absolute favorite Alice in Chains album for multiple reasons. Um, the musicality, the produ- the production on there is absolutely phenomenal. Um, just everything blending together. And it's the last album with Lane kind of just is amazing. But one of my favorite riffs off there. It's not even my favorite riff off there, but it's just so good as uh, Sludge Factory. So this is the opening to Sludge Factory. It's so simple, but very effective. You still uh, this half step? And you need to put some more gain on that ting. Just an absolutely disgusting riff through and through. Um, I put a little more gain on that. Colby asked for some more. But, uh, yeah, just one of my favorite riffs from Jerry. It's so simple, but yet powerful. Yeah, one of my favorite parts of that is the the part uh, after the main part where he leaves it open. The That's the and you can just feel the, the bass. He just lets it. 
Yeah, just lets it breathe so much. Because he's he palm mutes that. Yeah. But just lets that lingering, bassy, you know, palm muted. Had to let it linger, bro. Had to let it linger. The song is so good too. It is. It's a great song. Um, but yeah, and then just into that that chorus part um is also so great. So I'll do that one as well. So it goes from that original riff, but it goes. <laughs> Might have been a little off, but might have been a little off. But that's the tuning has been all over the place today. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Kind of just. I don't know what that tune. That's why. But yeah, it's, it just sounded a little off. It's that chair. <laughs> Oh. But yeah, yeah that that riff is just absolutely nasty. One of my favorites off of Tripod, and a lot of the riffs off of Tripod are very arpeggiated, very tough to play. But this one is very simple and effective, and very fun to play along to. So if you want to learn a good riff, learn Sludge Factory. It's very very beginner riff, I'd say. Oh, I would say so. Yeah. Yeah, it's one that anyone maybe can the, play. Maybe the maybe the like the kind of like the lead part is a little, a little a little challenging, hard, especially um, with traversing the neck. But yeah, but and the, maybe the tuning part maybe a little hard mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. But um, yeah, learn Sludge Factory, great riff. But Colby, what do we got next? Well, this is another one I'll toss to you. God mm. am. Okay. <laughs> So, Goddamn has rec has recently become one of my favorite riffs from Jerry, just in general, because of the heaviness of it. Um, and it's so, so simple, so surprisingly simple, but just, <clears throat> it's only half step down, once again, but it sounds like it could be lower than that, just because of how heavy it is. But here's Goddamn. So we should have definitely been doing that the whole time. What? The tumnus, the yeah, thing. I know. Tumnus, that yeah. sounds way better. Uh, so yeah, that that riff is just disgusting. First of all, um, the keel center performance where he does like a little. <laughs> Something like that just uh, goes right into it. Yeah, the one thing I love, it's a kind of a, it's really, it, I think it is also another Eddie Van Halen thing that he learned with the the, the part uh, when he's in the... Oh, yeah, picking the open strings down there. Because yeah. uh, in a, the, the Van Halen song, On Fire, he does like a... Probably, yeah. So, like, Probably, he might have, actually. might have picked it up from that. Yeah. With that little like uh, leaving with the top with the bar chord, and then leaving the bottom out, but then clenching down. Because Van Halen's typically half step down, isn't it? Aren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The whole first album's half step down. Yeah, so definitely some Van Halen influence there for sure. But he said, I, he, I don't. I think he doesn't know where. Like Jerry doesn't know where he got it from. Yeah, it's from something like that. But yeah. he said he just liked it. So. And it's just he uses those power chords so often. <laughs> Just just those bass power chords up on the sixth string, and it's just so he uses them in so many different ways. The riff for what goddamn he uses those power chords so often, um, and it's just they're so effective. He uses them all the time. I know he uses them on No Excuses, uh, Got Me Wrong. He uses them. Uh, Rooster uses them. Bunch of songs he uses them. So yeah. 
Don't want it now? Yeah. So don't want it now? What? No rooster. Oh, you can do rooster if you want. Show them rooster real quick. It's a, sure. it's a I simple only riff, know so. I only know the intro. I, I'll just put a little bit of reverb. Yeah. Might be a little too much. Maybe we'll just keep it off. Uh, but rooster is very easy. Chorusy oh. as well. Make sure you have a chorus. I sound a little off too. So We're yeah. having tuna nightmares here today, guys. Tuning is a nightmare today. What the? My G is totally out of whack. That doesn't surprise me. It shouldn't, because it always go, goes out of whack. Les Paul G strings are just... Okay, so, yeah. Goddamn, great riff. Rooster, also great riff. Very clean. Um, then it explodes. I, can, I, I can't remember if I know the wah part, but... I to, we don't have to go into that. Mm -mm. Um, it's not on our list. But, Colby, what do we got next? Um, well, after that, we have Don't Follow. Oh, okay, yeah. If you want to grab the acoustic, you can move your mic down a little bit. We got Don't Follow as our next riff slash song. It's not really technically a – well, it is a riff, I guess. But oh, we're putting it on the acoustic. It's on Jar of Flies. Colby, take it away. Yeah. It's and it's well, literally, it's literally just like that throughout the entire song until you get to the one part um, where Lane comes in and it's just. ends on that beautiful song just you know we thought it was a deep cut but it's really not it's really a loved song by everyone in the Allison Chains community so it's awesome yeah, we um, it way less popular. but it's very popular um but yeah that's just once again so simple going over what four chords uh pretty much yeah yeah and just arpeggiating through them just Love it. So atmospheric as well. Got reverb on the acoustic. Sounds great. Um, but yeah. Colby, what do we have next for our next riff? All right. Our next one after that is... Well, I don't know why. I, I, I was trying to finish. I was going to just hit the chord, but it is Man in the Box. Woo-wee. Okay. I can't. No, I'm not going to do that. It'd be too loud. It'd be way too loud. One of the one that really started it all, um, Man of the Box. So one of the first songs I fully learned all the way through. Love it to bits. Um, yeah. You want to go into the riff? Yeah, we could like uh, we could both do one of them. Yeah, because it has double guitars on it. Mm -hmm. So All right. So which one do you want to do? You want to do the wah or do you want to do the? Uh, I'll do the, I can do the wah. Okay. Okay. No, I, oh. All right. All right. Well, I'm just normally it's just you do it on one. Uh, we'll both start on the riff and then I'll go to the wall like it usually does. All right, you ready? Okay. Three, two. <laughs> Kind of 
kind of missed the wall a little bit there. But you got to hard end. when you're sitting down. It is harder when you're sitting down. Yeah. But now you know the premise of that riff. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just the, the, <laughs> <laughs> the premise of that riff is just all on that fifth fret right there. It's just the the main issue that you may have with it as a beginner is the rhythm. Really? Yes. I know sometimes he plays it live and does some like uh chicka chickas in the middle, some uh chucks in the middle. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, he'll do it like like that and it sounds cool. Um it's I think it helps keep the rhythm better as well. Um but yeah, that that part is just bah. Glorious. Yeah. But then we go into this pre-chorus section, um, which the bass part on this is actually pretty cool. It's walking up a lot. But the pre-chorus section goes something like this. So yeah, that that whole build up right there, just everything for that song. I feel like, really, build up with the drums, build up with the bass, everything just kind of makes Slug. it to that chorus. Yeah, it just makes it to that chorus, and then it just goes to that E to G to D to A, and that's it. That's it. Just such a simple chorus. Um. But yeah, so effective once again. Uh, yeah, man of the box. Up until that point, it's about it's basically the same throughout. He he has this little lick going into the second chorus. It's it's this, just that double stops um, on the fourteenth fret, and yeah, love it. Yeah, let's quickly let's go over some of our favorite parts from the solo oh yeah yeah so yeah. the solo was so fun to play we're not probably not gonna do a full on uh yeah play like through, but if you want to do like the beginning the uh, beginning trill and then end it on that part yeah, yeah so in the beginning it comes in after the shot and just yeah so this is this is the beginning of the solo <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, I forget who used this term, but I uh, um, used the term chopping. Yeah. At, chopping at the note. So then after the part, he bends up and goes. As, yeah. the, as the note's going up, he's like chop or going down. Yeah, and then he, t he keeps that wah on for the rest of that. You can do that little blues lick uh, after that. The. <laughs> Yeah, blues Just like it. that. Uh, sure. So I'll do the chop part again. Yeah. Yeah. Controlling the wall is a little hard. I'm very new to using the wall. Yeah, it's it's a little hard when you're sitting down. Like three too, months now. So. But um. But and yeah, then and then he goes part. into. Yeah, just this part right here is so fun. But. Right back into it. Yeah, the part we love so much is that is that uh, little like it's like a funk thing. Oh, it's so nice. Add a little bit of. Really reminds me of the um, one of these nights solo as well. Yeah, goes back to that. Yeah, um, but yeah, so groovy, so bluesy as well. Jerry's the king of blues and grunge. Um, but yeah, and then it kind of just does the exact same thing from there after the solo, and it's just awesome. So, man of the box, Colby, you got anything else you want to add? Um. Uh, not really. No. All right. 
Well, so, 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 so self-explanatory. Yeah, that's it's song. all you need to know. But um, our last song, we felt like, since it is the last song on Dirt, should be the last song for the video, um, Wood. So, Colby, do you want to take this riff or you want me to take it? I can do as much as you want. You want to do the solo? Yeah. All right. So, the main riff for Wood goes a little something like this. That's the little chorus part of there, and then it just <clears throat> so I don't even know how to describe it. I really don't know how to describe wood. Punchy, nasty. It's a Jerry. It's a banger. It is a banger. Perfect song to end off the album with. Um, we could both do the chorus if you want. We can both go into it. Sure. So the chorus, it comes off still doing. <laughs> Then it builds up. So, just such, I mean, it's just two chords. Just two chords. It's a little hammer on. A little hammer on, that's it. That's all, that's all you need. And it's so fun to play. Um, such an, it's, it's a relatively easy strumming pattern, too. It kind of just goes along with the vocals. So, yeah, just one of my favorite choruses of the 90s, easily. Into the Flood again. But got a great solo in here, too. Colby's going to take this one, so... Colby, hit him with the solo. Okay. Again, give me one playthrough. Yeah. Anthony, cut this part out. I know yeah. I have wah, but I don't really want to do the wah. This is the... Yeah, you want to do it? Sure. So Colby's got the solo. Here we go. And then it, that en that ending part. the end yeah we play it differently let's uh yeah let's, I let's compare our because i play the d up here i play the d up there yeah 
then you play it back there as an open chord. Yeah. Get those open strings with it. So it's a... That part is so cool. Yeah, I love that part. Love that part. And it's the same chord as the man of the box. Same chord, just down. Just down. It's, oh, man, I love that whole end ending section of wood is so powerful it's great transcendent transcendent um yeah colby is there anything else that you want to add to this Uh uh-uh. i'm excited for the next one yeah so let us let us know you guys if you like this style of video if you want us to play guitar more in videos do other instruments we have a drum kit we have bass as well so we could do that um yeah let us know if you guys like this Really appreciate the support lately. It's been awesome. We'll step up um, our game next time. Step up the game next time. We'll, we'll warm up before. But, yeah, if you don't have anything else to add, Colby, go ahead and sign this off. I'm Ryan. I'm Colby. This has been the Puddle of Grunge podcast. Peace out, guys.